Kirby, you're looking good spirits. You must be really enjoying India. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. ओम <coughs> 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 नमो समय सारा या स्वानु भूतिया चकासते चित्सवावाय भावा या सर्व भावांते रचिते अब ज्ञान तिमिर अंदा नम ज्ञाना अंदन सलाक या चक्षुर मिल धन्ये न तस्मे श्रीगुरु वेन तेरसंकरो जगतना जय वंत वर्तो ओमकारनाद जिनो जय वंत वर्तो जिनना समो सरण शव जय वंत वर्तो नेतिर पचार जगमा जय वंत वर्तो नमो ए तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार शंकर होते ने नमो तेसे कुंड कुंड ने अहो उपकार जिन वरनो कुंदनो धनि देवे जीन कुंड ध्वनि अप्य अहो ते गुरु कानन अहो ते भगवत मातन वेद <laughs> जय जिनेन्द्र टुडे इज डिसम्बर नाइन्थ वेन्सडे इवनिंग एंड वी आर टेकिंग दिस क्लास ऑन समेसार वी आर टेकिंग समेसार स्टांजा सिक्स एंड वी आर टेकिंग द भावार्थ ऑफ दैट स्टांजा Bhavarth is a one which was written by Jaychandji Chabra. Means he gives further explanation of the stanza. We have gone in extreme detail, and by now we all know exactly what this six stanza says. So basically, what this uh, further explanation means, Bhavarth says, is kind of revision of what we know. and uh, it is very important as we say that this is the real real root of this samesa this is the base of the samesa this is what some kunkun acharya wants us to understand about it and this is very very microcosm of this uh, uh, metaphysics of the soul metaphysics that it explains to us who i am what i am what are my functions what are my duties as a soul as a soul what are so those are the things that i expect so let's go through the slides and uh, come to uh, Okay, 
So we were talking about a, a, a process of knowledge occurring in a given mode. Those are that that was our subject uh, that the, how the process occurs. So we, we were talking that uh, and then we also had other questions and uh, we almost spent one hour last week with the different questions, but that was important. Important thing is we should understand exactly what we are, uh, what we are talking about. And so don't worry about any question coming out, interrupt and we'll continue that way. There is no problem with that. So. Uh, we already know this part, so we are going to go through it. That how the process of knowledge occurs. The mode per AI by itself transformed in a particular form by its own independence. Per AI, the mode gets transformed in a particular form by its own independence. In a, it is predetermined, predestined since time infinite. And those modes are coming in sequential order, one after another, after another, after another. So it is prefixed. <coughs> so the shape created by this mode is known as Gnanaka, means shape of the knowledge mode. Shape created in the sense when we talk that when we have talked about the mirror example, the mirror shows the illumination. This illumination occurring in the mirror is is a shape created by the mirror itself so this shape is created by this mode by itself and that's what gnanaka means shape of the knowledge mode when i look at this telephone right now i look at this phone then this phone gets illuminated in my knowledge mode just like in the camera there is an illumination of the picture occurs. Same way, the creation, the shape occurred in my knowledge mode. This knowledge mode created this shape by itself, by its own independence. And that's why it's called Gnanaka, shape of a knowledge mode. Then, as we said, this is prefix in a mode and it occurs independently at its own given time. It was supposed to happen that I'm supposed to lift this phone to show it, then illumination occurs within me. It was predetermined, prefixed. Yesterday, we tried to take this uh, class on uh, um, basic Jainism, and it was not supposed to happen. And so we tried so hard, it didn't happen. So one has to accept those things rather than fighting against, my God, internet is horrible over here, nobody's going to help. Why, why should I blame everybody? It was not supposed to happen, so it didn't happen, period. Case closed. There was no end of the world occurred just because one class didn't occur. So it gives us peace of mind when we accept the things as they are. Rather than fighting against, there is a, there is a glass on a table. And one says glass is half full, one says glass is half empty. It all depends on my own interpretation. Glass did not change. Glass did not ask me to make the judgment. It just my own interpretation. My own mode was occurring that way. And my own mode decided that glass is half empty. And um, uh, 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 Ankit's mode said glass is half full. So it all depends. Your own mode doing your own work independently. So. At this time, when this kind of action occurs in a given mode of a knowledge, remember, when we talk about mode, in this context, we only talk about knowledge mode. But remember, at a given moment, at a given summary, all the infinite attributes, they have the modes present in one single summary. But, we give importance to knowledge more only because of his extraordinary capacity of knowing self and knowing others also. No other more, no other attribute in the universe has that capacity. This is the extraordinary capacity of the knowledge more. That's why we keep on talking knowledge, 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 knowledge more, knowledge more like that. In Samaisa, 
this word is coming so often that sometimes one believes that more means knowledge more only and just to clear that confusion the last chapter of samesa amrachandracharya puts it extra chapter and says remember until now up to 415 stanza we talk about knowledge mode knowledge mode knowledge mode and one believes that mode means knowledge mode only but no that is not true there are other things are also present and he makes us aware of those other other things you know so right now when we talk about knowledge mode means knowledge when we talk about mode means knowledge mode and when this knowledge mode create the shape in its own fashion at the time an object simply present as an instrumental cause there is no denial of object being present object is present an object is a part of the whole process but object remains inert if there is a fire actual fire as an object the mirror will show the fire mirror will not become hot if there is a heap of snow in front of a, a, a mirror mirror will reflect the heap of snow but mirror will not become cold so object is present but simply as an instrumental cause remember instrumental cause means nimit nimit n i m i t nimit Nimit means it is present when an act is getting generated in a principal cause. This nimit means instrument cause is present but cannot interfere in a principal action. So its presence is important but cannot interfere. So that definition we had to really really learn hard and we have to know that object is present but what we are talking we are talking principal core principal thing we are talking action within me i'm talking action in my knowledge more and i'm giving importance to that one so this instrument of course becomes secondary even when it's present so it's no denial but it's it's become secondary then knowledge mode knows the shape in its more mode knowledge mode has a capacity to know whatever shape is created within the picture of snow is created picture of fire is created then knowledge mode knows the shape in its mode See, it looks like an oxymoron. It looks like some mode knows the mode. Yes, we have to understand that part because the next slide will tell us why we are making this. This is very, very, very principal and detailed about it. So, what did knowledge mode end up knowing? The shape occurred on the knowledge mode. Knowledge mode ends up knowing that shape. Knowledge mode did not know anything else. When we say peacock is present as an object, knowledge mode has a peacock shape created and knowledge mode knew this shape of the peacock in its own knowledge mode. Same way, there is an inclination of attachment. Ra is an outside object. It gets illuminated in the knowledge mode and knowledge modes ends up knowing the illumination of this inclination of attachment. So knowledge mode remains separate, inclination of attachment remains separate, inclination of attachment remains as an object and a knowledge mode ends up knowing its own illumination of inclination of attachment within. So that way, rag in the uh, inclusion of attachment is called object. It's away from me. Away means it is occurring within me, but still we have to make that, that fine judgment 
of making that as a secondary, making these as a uh, less important. And important thing is my knowledge mode, me as a knowledge mode, and knowing the shape of the intrinsic attachment. As we give an example of the dog, dog is chewing the bone, and the sharpness of the bone is hurting his uh, uh, palate, and his uh, blood comes out, and what he believes. Remember, he believes that this sweetness taste come from the bone. In fact, he is enjoying his own blood. Same way, influence of attachment is an object get illuminated in the knowledge mode. Knowledge mode ends up knowing this illumination of the uh, 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 Intuition of attachment and what I believe that I know the intuition of attachment. I make my ownership on this rag. I just say, I knew the rag. No, I did not know the rag. Actually, I end up knowing the shape of the rag getting illuminated in my knowledge more. So, as the dog tastes its own blood, I'm also enjoying my own knowledge mode and I believe that I am enjoying or I am rejecting my influence of attachment and aversion. I have the rag and wish. I make unity with that. And that unity and my ownership on it is called wrong faith. Wrong faith is not crudely say that you know to, to, to believe the wrong gods and wrong scripture and wrong guru, but those are just very, very, way, way, way secondary. When I believe my knowledge God knows the influence of attachment, that is the wrong assumption. That is that's a that's a wrong assumption, that's a wrong belief. So here, Acharya Bhagwan brings it to this microscopic level for us to understand what is. Yes. Yes. When when the knowledge when the when the Gnan Pariyai knows Rad, yeah. that's what we called the Kalp last week, correct? Yeah. Okay. So 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 when I know the when I know the influence of attachment, when I know the influence of attachment, then. It is also called reflective thoughts, vikal. When I just said, I did the rag. I am the reason for making this rag and everything. Then it becomes mithyatva. When I make them unity, it is the vikal, means it is the reflective thought. Uh, Kiranko, yes. just for clarification, uh, I don't know if this is true. I'd like I'd like to know if this is true. I recall having heard somewhere that rag uh, swanipar. So let's say part is rag swanipar nekatva is called asra. Now, what you just said was that when you when you assume unity between knowledge and rag, that's vikal. So are, can you please draw the distinction between Vikalp and Asra? See, when I make unity with them, it's called Vikalp. And when I make ownership on that, that's called Mithyatva. Once again, when I say this is the inclination of attachment, Rag over here, and I am, my knowledge mode is over here, and my knowledge mode ends up knowing the illumination of the influence of attachment in my knowledge mode. That's a process. Now, if I make them as one unit, that's called rag, means I have the rag, and when I take the ownership that I did this rag, then it's called mithyatva. When I do, we make the owner, remember, Mithyatva is the higher form of rag. Remember, in the wrong faith, wrong faith, 
there are four, 16 types of areas of attachment, means rag and grace, clothes, man, maya, loba, anger, deceit, ego, and greed are there. So the very first set of four is called uh, Anantanamandi, Grod, Man, Maya, Lok, means infinite bonding, uh, um, anger, deceit, ego, and greed. And that infinite bondage of anger, deceit, ego, and greed are part of wrong faith. When the infinite bonding, uh, um, uh, anger, ego, deceit, greed goes away, then of Pratyakhani, Pratyakhani and Sanjwadan Kashai. They are still present in their milder form of uh, intense of attachment and aversion. Mithyatva is an intense form of uh, intention of attachment and aversion. Once the Mithyatva is gone, when this fourth spiritual development stage occurs, when some when a, a, a soul obtains Samyak Darshan, then he has milder form of rag and dvesh present. It remains all the way up to end of 10th spiritual development stage. So remember, when we say rag and dvesh, it's an intense form. When I get so engrossed within, I'm the first thing. I, I justify my influence of attachment and aversion. Let's say, let's say anger. I became angry. That's a one, story, one story, I think. But I have to become angry because of you guys. You are making my life miserable. And if I take the ownership of that anger, that's called mithyatva. No, I understand that. I understand that. Here's, here's, I guess, here's my question. Yeah. Um, okay. First of all, did, did, is that correct? Was my statement correct? Or at least my understanding of the statement, Swaparna Ekatva is called Asra? Is that correct or is that false? Swaparna Ekatva is Asra, you said, right? Yes. Is that true? Uh, uh, yeah, because, yeah, yeah. See, the, uh, what you are doing is you are making definition from the other angle. You are taking nine elements and then you are talking about uh, uh, inflow uh, element. What is inflow element? Means I have the unity with the uh, alien object, and that's an inflow element. So we are looking at that from that perspective. Here, what we are talking about when object is here, I am here, and I consider both as together. We can also call that one as an astral. Also, yes, we can call that okay. astral. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Right. Oh, she has a question. Excuse me. Okay. Right. So, knowledge mode is knowing the shape in the mode. Now, impurity of the alien object does not enter this knowing capacity of the mode. Means, knowledge mode did the reflection independently. The illumination occurring in the knowledge mode was independent. And the object was present simply as an instrumental cause. Now, if I believe that I end up knowing because of the object being present, then there is impurity entered in my knowledge more. Remember, if I believe, the word is believe, believe. If I believe that my knowledge mode got reflection or got illumination because of object being present. For example, uh, Siddha Bhagwan, Siddha Bhagwan, the liberated soul, knows everything past, present, and future of each and every substance's modes, infinite modes of each substance, substances. And there are infinite substances, are infinite number of substances are infinite in the universe. He knows all the things. Now, if one believes, believes, believes that this knowledge occurred in the omniscient, I mean, in a liberated soul, just because whole universe is present, then it's a wrong belief. 
and it, it brings a, 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 a impurity in the uh, impurity of the alien um, object entering in the more so I, Siddha Bhagwan, liberated soul and omniscient Lord Aryan Bhagwan, they both have capacity of their own. That knowledge more has capacity not only to know this universe, but if the infinite universes were present, this knowledge more has a capacity to know all those things. So this capacity of knowledge more is independent. That's a word that that's a carry on message that we have to take in, uh, take into consideration. Okay, now we are coming to the point: do or did relationship? Do and uh, this was that I think three or four or five times or five uh, classes back. Uh, um, uh, Chirag raised the questions, and uh, there is an answer to that question over here. Do or did relationship? Who is that? Do who is who does the work? And what kind of work is getting done? The doer is a worker, and deed is a work. Worker doing the work. So knowledge mode. Now we are talking. We are coming not only the soul substance, but in the soul substance, we just made a soul substance a secondary, the attribute a secondary, and we are talking knowledge mode principally right now. That this knowledge mode has capacity to know the self and alien objects of the universe. It's called so or prakasha. This is the most absolute, absolute characteristics of this knowledge mode to know the self and to know the uh, every all the alien objects. Now, the elimination of the alien as well as eternal soul substance occurs in the knowledge mode. Remember, as I say, that now we are talking from the knowledge mode's perspective. So we also make soul, eternal soul substance a secondary, all its attributes a secondary, and this knowledge mode does all the action right now. In this action, in this action, what happens? This illumination of the alien objects occur and also illumination of the eternal soul substance occur in this knowledge mode. For example, there is a, uh, there is a lamp. This lamp is lighting the whole room. So now there's a light over here. I can see the bed, I can see the pillow, I can see the picture of Kuparu there, and I can see all those things. So all the alien objects are illuminated with the light. And to illuminate the light itself, do I need another light? The same question again. To, to illuminate this, this light has illuminated, there's a cabinet over here, there's a computer sitting over here, I'm sitting on the sofa, there's a bed over here. All those objects are there. So light has illuminated all the objects. But now I want to illuminate the light. Do I need another lamp? to illuminate this light? No, the light itself illuminates the self. So I can see the bulb in the, um, uh, uh, the ceiling and this bulb is giving light and light is giving all the alien objects illuminations. Similarly, this knowledge mode, knowledge mode knows the whole capacity to know the whole universe. Any uh, alien object, illuminates and at the same time the same knowledge mode illuminates the eternal soul substance so it does that, that means swapper prakasha self illumination and alien object illumination this is very important concept to understand now oh by, by the way this illumination of the alien objects and eternal soul substance occur in knowledge mode all the time to every living being. Be it, be, it could be a negot cell, lowest form of life, or it could be human being like us, five cents sentient being, or it could be omniscient Lord, or it could be liberated. So any living being on the earth, continuously this illumination keeps on going of alien objects and eternal soul substance in the knowledge mode. So then, 
why do I not know my eternal soul substance? That's a question. How come I know everything, but I don't see my own self? Well, because I have not given importance to that. If I give importance to my eternal soul substance, then I will be able to perceive that only and uh, the, the illumination of the alien objects of the universe will become secondary. I want to go to, from New York, I want to go to Florida. So uh, on the way, there are hundred, hundreds and thousands of cars pass by. I see them. I don't pay attention to them. I see hundreds of signboards coming. I don't, <coughs> excuse me. I don't pay attention to that. I just simply see them, make it secondary. Only the board, I want to know, Miami, 300 miles, Miami, 250 miles, Miami, 100 miles, Miami, 50, only. So I give importance to that board only. All other board becomes secondary, even though I see them. So here, me as a transmigratory soul, that I keep on seeing every universal substances illumination within me, but my own soul substance also get illuminated and I have not put attention to that one. As we get the example of the crying baby, crying child, and when the mother comes and he stops crying, even though he is halting, means now his attention is drawn to the mother. And so even though pain is present, his attention is away from the pain. Same way here, elimination of the eternal soul substance occurs within me, as well as alien objects are getting illuminated, but I give importance to the alien objects. My faith is directed to alien objects, and my faith is made, made my eternal soul substance illumination secondary. Only the thing I have to do is to change this faith from alien objects, I have to bring my faith to my eternal soul substance. That's all I have to do. That is my purusha. This is what I'm supposed to do. That will be Samyak Dasha. I'll be on the path to liberation. And that's what it is. Simple thing. Acharya Bhagwan said, remember, I made this one so easy for you. If you don't understand this part, then it's your problem. So those are the things that we don't understand. Now, this illumination, of course, in the mode, Due to eligibility of the mode itself and no other outside alien objects or even the soul substance is responsible for it. Remember, this is now very, very loaded sentence coming. The illumination is supposed to occur at this particular time of particular objects. This, soul, this mode has its own eligibility. Be, be, uh, infinite amount of modes in the past and infinite amount of modes in the future, they will come in the sequential order be, as, as per their eligibility. Jerica? Yes. Is this Tatsamay Nu Yogita? I'm sorry? Is this Tatsamay Nu Yogita? Tatsamay Nu Yogita, that's eligibility, yes. At that particular time, the mode has that particular eligibility. Tatsamani Yogeta. Tatsamani means that particular time. Yogeta means eligibility. That particular time, that eligible mode was supposed to get generated and it did get generated. So, this occurs independently in this mode. Even the soul substance is not responsible for it. And outside alien objects are not responsible for it. Remember, as we said, illumination occurs in this knowledge more, this present knowledge more, in which soul substance get illuminated, alien objects get illuminated, but that's a mode, its own eligibility. And at the time, soul substance is secondary, instrumental cause, alien objects secondary, instrumental cause, I do the work in my, in this mode, my, my, this mode says, I'm the performer, I'm the doer, I'm the worker, I do the work, so the, this mode becomes doer. Now, 
this knowledge mode with its own independence will know the illumination of the self as well as alien object. Now, this knowledge mode did the work. What did what work did it do? It just illuminated eternal soul substance and alien object of the universe. That did the, the, the it just did the illumination. So it did that work. Now that work is done, this knowledge mode independently will know the illumination. Number one was illumination part, and second is knowing the illumination. And this knowing the illumination of the self and alien object becomes its deed. It's deed, it's a work. Worker did the illumination, and what did the what did this knowledge mode do the work? It knew this illumination. So doer and deed occur in the same same mode at a given time, and this is called doer deed relationship in the same or the same or the same mode, and that's a height of the absolute independence of every substance. Their attributes and even their mode of one moment, one samay is more. Ek samay ni pariyai ni swatantrata. This is the absolute fact that Kun Kun Swami gave it to us two thousand years back, and then Amrit Chandracharya gave the commentary and further explanation thousand years back, and with our luck. Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami expanded all this thing for 45 years and get give this independence of the more in us so much that now we know that anything happens to me is my own doing. I don't have to blame to anybody. Else. So my, my, my conduct becomes natural. I don't have to just work on the conduct. It just becomes natural because I'm independent. My mode is independent. My mode does the work independently. So nobody is responsible for that. So rather than blaming the whole world, I just take importance to me. Buck stops at me. And that's what I have to understand. So, knower, karta is a mode. And knowing action, karma is also the same mode. Worker is a mode. And its work is a knowing action of knowing action of work is also the same mode. So do or deep relationship occurs in the same mode. That's a height of the independence. Now, now that we have a you know when we talked this one about two or three sessions back, um, Kathy is a one. She is in the class right now. And she is a very, very learned lady. She has done a PhD in philosophy and everything. And she has done world religion. And now she comes to know that uh, Jainism is only the one which gives clear explanation of everything. And what she did was, I want to show you something that she just shared with me that uh, it will be fun to understand what, what what she wrote down to me, Kathy, I just took the uh, 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 screenshot of the thing that you wrote down. Explanation of Vi Wu Wei. He is a very ancient uh, uh, um, philosopher in China. And he said that, in, uh, 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 that interpretation and argued that they are incomplete without the moral, radical understanding of Wu Wei as non dual action. That is, now important word, action in which there is no bifurcation between subject and object, means no awareness of an agent that is believed to do the action has been distinct from an objective action that is getting done. Uh, Kathy, this is a fantastic thing that you shared with us and that's, I, 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 I took the liberty to share with everybody else that, Kathy, can you throw some uh, uh, throw some light on this subject, please, if you can? Well, not really. That's just the basis of Taoism, and it, it's been around for like twenty five hundred years too. Lao Tzu, the Chinese um, founder of Taoism, 
but I've really never understood it until tonight. I thought about it a long time and it's really hard for the Western mind to understand it. And you really did explain it. That action is separate from the work. But I'm not sure, are we all capable of that level? Yeah, but Kathy, this is so good that at least somebody 2,500 years back, somewhere way, way back in China also, they were thinking this radical uh, thought also. And that's amazing that, uh, you know, how philosophy is, philosophical mind thinks the exact same thing, you know. It's amazing, amazing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this, this fact, Kathy, with us. And that's very good. Okay, coming back to our, 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 our uh, current slide. Okay, so we did a dual de relationship that way. And now, how is more getting originated? Now, again, this will now we'll be able to go quickly because these are kind of revision. Objects get illuminated in the knowledge mode, which arises from all knower soul substance. Mode occurred coming from the all knower soul substance has a knowledge attribute and from that the mode got originated. It did not get generated or due to an alien object. This generation of mode occurred within me only and no object was reason for that. Ownership belongs to all knower soul substance. This ownership of the of knowledge mode belongs to all knower substance. Mode getting generated, and I further once saying that ownership belongs to all knower soul substance, and then also within that all knower soul substance ownership, the mode getting generated due to its own eligibility, own samarthya, that so many yogeta, and so. This is the way the modes get originated. Nobody is interfering in my knowledge, knowledge modes uh, uh, occurring. It's independent. It's coming from the all knower soul substance and alien objects have no influence on it. Yes, alien object could be present at instrumental cause, but instrumental cause is instrumental cause, simply present but cannot take part into the whole action. So that's a mode's origination. Mode from, now, now we have, now, now this next two slides, and they are gonna be really, really tough slide to digest because we have not done the partial point of views in detail. But bear with me, and after certain classes, we are gonna take partial point of view as a subject because that will be coming in the nine stanza and 11 stanza of Samaisa. Mainly 11 stanza it will come. And so when that comes, we'll be talking at great length. But right now, let's understand a mode, we are looking from different angle, different perspective. Okay, I'm curious right now. We are talking Samesa right now from one angle. I'm sitting in Dharampur, that's another angle. I'm Vibhuti's husband, that's a third angle. I'm Amit Rishi and Rina's father, that's a fourth angle. I'm Jitu's brother, that's a fifth angle. Lots of different angles are there. So I have infinite way I could be known, out of which as the subject is concerned, you make that partial point of view important and make less as secondary. Don't reject, but make them secondary. If we are talking class right now, then that is important. And whose husband, whose father, whose brother, all those things become way secondary. If there's a family gathering, then yes, it's important whose father, whose brother, whose, uh, whose, uh, whose son, all those things will become important at that time. So a given reality can be seen from many different perspectives. And now the same mode we are looking from different perspective and analyze and say what it is. Now, number one, 
eternal soul substance is pure and it is a subject of pure point of view. Shuddha Naino Vishay. Hang on to this thought right now. Eternal soul substance is pure. It's always pure. Gold is a gold, is a gold, is a gold, whether it's in the mind or whether it's in an impure form, whether it's in dirt or whether it's in a pure form. Gold is a gold. So eternal substance is pure. And it's a subject of now when this purity we are talking of eternal soul substance, then then who knows this one? In mode ends up knowing. Remember previous slide, we just said action, the worker is a mode. Soul substance is inert, infinite attributes are inert. And the knowledge mode is only the one which is active, which do, which show the work, and so it's a worker. The, the hard worker is my mode. So this mode also ends up knowing this eternal soul substance. So it's a subject of pure point of view, which my mode decided, my mode means me as a mode decided to look at the eternal soul substance. To look at the eternal soul substance, to perceive the eternal soul substance. So, eternal soul substance is pure and it's a subject of pure point of view. Point of view, partial point of view, action, action, action occurs in the mode. And it just knew the eternal soul substance. So, it's called Suddha Naino Vishay. Mode which knows this state is also called pure. Remember, the, this mode has a reflect, uh, illumination of the object, worldly object, and illumination of the soul substance. So now, this mode decided to put all the attention to this eternal soul substance. And that's why this mode is also called pure. So the knowledge mode, knowing the soul substance, is also known as subject of pure point of view. Pariyai Nepal, Suddha Naino Vishay Kayoshe. This is according to stanza 14 in Samesar. When we come to stanza 14, it will be just, it will blossom it out, the bright new things for us. Right now, my mode end up knowing eternal soul substance, and so my mode is also called pure, pure point of view. So this mode, is called pure point of view, Suddha Neno Vishay. Second thing, mode occurring due to association with an alien object is considered as impure. This mode, this knowledge mode now reflects the alien object and this alien object got reflection because alien objects are present. If I believe that way, if I believe that way, then this mode is called impure. The, the word believe is important. How, what action occurs is totally different. But if I believe that I have the alien object illumination because this alien object is present. If I believe that way, then this is called impure substantial point of view. Why? Asuddha Dravyartik Neno Vishay. Substantial because this mode originates from the substance. This mode originates from the soul substance. Soul substance has a knowledge attribute and the mode per AI got originated. So it, it is it is called substantial view. Now it is impure because it is associated because I made the association with the alien objects. I made the association with the alien objects. And that's why it is called impure. Remember, action is same. My belief in the first in this first bullet that it has it has just seen the eternal soul substance, so the pure point of view. Here it is looking at the alien objects and knowledge is looking because of the alien object. That's why it's called impure substantial point of view. And this is our sixth stanza when we talk 
attentive and non-attentive mode, pramat and apramat modes. Pramat and apramat pariyai. What is apra, What is pramat? First to sixth spiritual development stage, and seven to fourteen spiritual uh, spiritual stage is called attentive mode. Mm -hmm. Attentive means this mode is engrossed within the true nature of the self, and non-attentive means it is re related to the reflection of the alien object. So it's a non-attentive mode, and this attentive mode or non-attentive mode are related to the presence or absence of karma being object, karma being present as instrumental cause. So when I say I have an attentive mode. Hiranaka? Yes. Does Vikalp end at seven? I'm, I'm sorry? Does Vikalp end at seven? Yeah, because Vik Vikalp ends at seven because what happens now seven to fourteen the soul is engrossed within soul is engrossed within its true nature and so when the experiencing phase is going on then even the knowledge mode is called nirvikalp from one perspective now yes uh, sorry forgive me but the question was, does Vikalp end at seven? I don't know why. I feel like the answer, I'm probably wrong. I think the answer is no. Asatma gunasthanak pachi nirvikalp tap satatre ke ibi chuti jai. Seventh gunasthan, the seventh spiritual development stage is divided into two parts. One part, in which from seven, you go to six all the time. Within Antar Mura, within intra-Indian hour, the soul goes from engrossment of the engrossment to the self to the engrossment in the alien objects to six gunstana. So that's a pramat. Pramat means so, non-attentive. So, pramat means so attentive. Now, now the later part of the seventh spiritual development stage then now it goes, it remains and grows within, and now it goes to 8, 9, 10, and 12, a spiritual development stage. Then he remains and grows within self only, and nothing else is happening. He is purely and grows in his eternal soul substance. And again, remember, yeah, go ahead. Um, for example, like if we're at, at the 10th Gunasthana, Yes. If we stay in that, if we stay in that uh, nirvikalpa stage for for antar murat, then so to moksh thay jai na. Yes. No. 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 Uh, uh, if you from seventh, one says seven to six, seven to six, seven to six to seven to six to seven. That spiritual development stage is keeps on occurring in Muniraj all the time. For example, when we talk about uh, Kunkun Swami, Kunkun Swami is in the seventh Gunstana as uh, and, and, and then also in the sixth Gunstana. Millions of times throughout the day, he keeps on making this journey. But now, when he gets engrossed within and later part of the seventh spiritual development stage, then he goes to eight, nine, and ten, and twelve, and all those things happen in within Antarmura within intra-Indian hour. And thereafter, the soul obtains total passionless state at the 12th spiritual development stage. And from there, within Antar Murat, he goes to 13th Kunstana and he obtains omniscience knowledge. So he becomes all-knower uh, uh, omniscient lord at the time. Passionless, all-knower, of all omniscient Lord, and that's a third spiritual development stage, and that remains till the age determining karma goes away, and then he obtains 14 and then goes to a uh, liberated um, uh, place. So he becomes Siddha Bhagavan. So, so, yeah. uh, so, so then Vikalp, 
doesn't end at seven. Week up should end when 13 starts because you still have some rag dwesh left. You are putting me to work and I was purposefully trying to avoid because it is and, and, and it's very good. I'm, I'm so happy, so happy that at least you are, because remember, in seventh onwards, eighth, ninth and tenth, there is still Sanjwaran Kashai present. Remember, Sanjwaran Kashai is present, right? Microscopic form of a, a, a vehicle are present, but it is called Buddhi Purak and Abuddhi Purak. Abuddhi Purak means even that soul is not able to catch that absolutely microscopic form of vehicle going within, but soul is not able to catch that. And soul is totally engrossed within, but underneath the surface, underneath is in, interact, that, that Sanjwal and Kashai still keeps on going. And it is made so secondary right now that we can just say that he is in a totally engrossment from the later part of the seven to eight to nine to ten to twelve. Real, real, real passionless, total, no toxic emotions at all. Of course, it's twelve Bunstana. So that is your right question. Yes, you are you are really, really ahead in thinking, and I'm really, really proud of you. Does it make sense? If not, then ask question. Okay, let's take the fourth gunstana. Let's say that the soul is on a fourth spiritual development stage. And when he's experiencing his own self right now, which is transient, on fifth gunstana, it will become a little bit more often and a little bit more longer. And seventh gunstana, it occurs continuously and then he goes to sixth and then seventh and sixth and seventh. That thing continuously occurs. So fourth spiritual development stage or fifth spiritual development stage, soul when goes in an experiencing phase, at that time he has yeah. a, a, a pratyakhani kashai, a pratyakhani kashai, sandran kashai, they are present according to the Sumbhastana. But they are, they are working at the subconscious level that soul in the experiencing phase is not able to pick that one up. So uh, underneath that process is going on, but we give the importance to the experiencing phase only. And so we just say he's a Gnani and so he has no bondage of karma. In fact, there is a bondage of karma, but it is so minuscule, so minuscule, that it's considered as none. So that happens in the fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth, all the to end of tenth. All those things happen. Make sense? We, you know what, we will take sometimes, uh, we, we, some, somewhere on the line, we will have to take the spiritual development stages to go in detail to understand all this, uh, the, the intricacy of action occurring. And uh, that will be a Karnanio chapter, that will be the uh, mathematical chapter. It will be very, very nice to go to those things. Make sense? Yeah, yeah I, I have a question. Someone else has a question. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just sometimes I feel like Agne and Agne new uh Agne and and uh it's just like uh uh how can I say this? It's like this Gnani Pariyai when it's Parulakshi, it feels like it's a different dravya and like you should just learn to sort of totally you know it, what it, you okay. know, someone else is obviously not under your control. So you don't, so you start losing attachment yeah. that way. But even your own gnan pariyai feels like it's not under your control when it's parlakshi. So then you should also just completely lose attachment to that too. Is that sort of yeah, yeah. what they're trying okay. to tell us? Okay, I understand your question. That the, the mode we are telling, the mode is independent. Even the substance has no control on the mode, what way that mode will behave. And the mode 
is as Ankit said, Tatsamaini Paryaini Yogyata means that mode has eligibility to occur at that given form, given stage. So now, if I understand that part, that mode keeps on coming, mode keeps on coming, mode keeps on coming, whether pure or impure, they keep on coming, right? They keep on coming and coming and coming. Now, if I know that I don't have control on even on my mode, that why should I try to change that mode situation? Yesterday, my class did not occur. It was supposed to happen. Did I try to change that mode anyway that by hook or crook I'll make sure that my internet works and it was not supposed to work. So if you accept that fact, then the anxiety of me changing my own mode, forget about me changing somebody else's mode, but me changing my own mode, that anxiety also goes away and I become at peace and I just say my Eternal source substance is my ultimate refuge. And if I just look at it only, that's it. I don't have to worry about anything else. Then my attention to, from the mode also goes away. And I am at peace. And I get super sensuous bliss. Because now my attention is focused only to the eternal soul substance. And that's all. So your question is, I cannot change somebody else's mode. That's okay. That we understand. But even I cannot change my own mode. So I have to have that kind of understanding. And if I have that kind of understanding, then I can progress. Or I'm on the fast track progress. Does it answer your question? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I have a question about the fast track progress. Yeah. Uh, a long time ago, I'm fascinated with King. Is it Harat? B H A R A T. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So did he go through all 14 stages in his life? All 14? All 14 stages. Within 48 minutes, he went through from fourth all the way to 14. And so that's a, when we look at that kind of, so for Mojave, it took 12 and a half years from seven to go to four, four, um, seven to uh, 13. Rushab Dev, the first Tirthankar, it took 1,000 years. And Bharat, it took only 48 minutes, within 48 minutes. So, I have a control. It doesn't, the, the, the past, uh, past life story of Tirthankar Bhagavan, everything, they just tell us that, listen, variation can be there. It's in your hand. You, your trigger is in your hand. If you just pull the trigger, you can finish everything within 48 minutes too. So fast track, he just happened. Mahavir, it took time. Rushabdi took longer time. But once you are on the track, once you're on the track, it doesn't make difference whether you finish in one life, three life, five life, or, four, or 15 life. But your infinite birth and death cycle is now broken. And now, in a very, very, very minimal time, one is able to get a, a, a liberation. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Marudeva Mata went, Bharatakavati's mother went from 1 to 14, right? Or 1 to 13. Yeah. So, so those are the things can happen to different. So when we look at the histories, those histories make us believe that you know what, I'm under I'm the control of my own destiny. I don't have to worry about anything else. Yes, it took um, um, twelve and a half years for Mahavi Swami, thousand years for Rishabh Dev, and uh, one day for uh, I think Malinath or so. It took one day, and Bharat took only forty-eight minutes. So there are all variations are there. It all depends on my attitude and my. Uh, 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 action, how how fast I try to put, how deeply I try to put this knowledge and act on it. 
All right, once one hour passed by, it's so, it's so fast, so quick. We are already four minutes about. Uh, if there is any other question, we can entertain. Otherwise, we can just go for next week. Thank you, Kirit Bhai. Okay, thanks, Jasubhan. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Samjai chhu, baddu barabar. That's very good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. That's good. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's do the closing. <coughs> Acha. Ah, go ahead. Go ahead. हाँ बस नहीं आवा अबे कल नो सेशन था जिन्हें पच्ची हूँ अमन तो नहीं है इस इंडिया विजय सुने दिले जावानी के ज्ञान से सूझे लोकालो सोवानी मस्तकन मो सदा देख हूँ जो नौ नाइन टाइम्स मो कम थे नमो वरन्ता नमो सिद्धा नमो आयन नमो जाम नमो ले सोचाम नमो वरन्ता नमो सिद्धा नमो आयन नमो जाम नमो ले सोचाम नमो अरंता नमो सिद्धा नमो आयन नमो जाम नमो ले सोचाम नमो अरंता नमो सिद्धा नमो आयन नमो जाम नमो ले सोचाम नमो अरंता नमो सिद्धा नमो आयन नमो जाम नमो ले सोचाम नमो अरंता नमो सिद्धा नमो आयन नमो जाम नमो ले सोचाम नमो अरंता नमो सिद्धा नमो आयन नमो जाम नमो ले सोचाम नमो अरंता नमो सिद्धा नमो आयन नमो जाम नमो ले सोचाम नमो अरंता नमो सिद्धा नमो आयन नमो जाम नमो ले सोचाम जय जिनेन्द्र जय जिनेन्द्र जय जिनेन्द्र सुना ध्यान से सुनो सेकंड आई नीड टू टॉक टू यू एंड लेट मी जस्ट पुट माय रिकॉर्डिंग ऑन